الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين فمن آمن وأصلح فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون والذين كذبوا بآياتنا يمسهم العذاب بما كانوا يفسقون قل لا أقول لكم عندي خزائن الله ولا أعلم الغيب ولا أقول لكم إني ملك إن أتبع إلا ما يوحى إلي قل هل يستوي الأعمى والبصير أفلا تتفكرون صدق الله العظيم And we did not send messengers except as مبشرين as those who give good news ومنذرين and as warners فمن آمن وأصلها and whoever believed in them وأصلها and reformed himself changed himself did good deeds فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون for them there is no خوف there is no fear ولا هم يحزنون and there is no sadness and there is no regret for them. وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا Those people who rejected our ayat, our miracles, Quranic verses, يَمَسُّهُمُ الْعَذَابِ The punishment of Allah, the عَذَابِ of Allah will touch them. بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ For what they have been doing. As a punishment for their wrongdoings, the punishment of Allah will reach out to them. قُلْ لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ Say to them, O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ I do not say to you, عِنْدِي خَدَائِنُ اللَّهِ that I own the treasures of Allah, I possess the treasures of Allah, وَلَا أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبِ and neither I claim that I have the Lord of Unseen Ghaib. وَلَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي مُلَكُ Nor I say to you that I am an angel. إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ Rather I follow إِلَّا مَا يُحَا إِلَيْ Whatever Vahi is sent to me. قُلْ Say to them هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَسِيرِ is the blind one and the one who is seeing, who can see, are they equal? Why don't you reflect? Why don't you ponder? My dear brothers and sisters, in today's weekly circle, weekly Quranic circle, in order, there are coming ayah number 50, ayah number 49, Ayah number 48. So, Ayah number 48 to Ayah number 53 verses we are going to learn about the interpretation, the tafsir of these three Ayah. In the first Ayah, Ayah number 50, 48, Ayah number 48, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ We never sent messengers. إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ Except they were, they were good news givers. They were those who gave good news. مُبَشِّرِينَ بَشَرَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ And they were the warners. They used to give the warnings. We sent messengers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and they did not control the life of the people. They did not force the people. They just gave the good news. Whoever believes in them, whoever does the good deed, they, he will be rewarded. This is the news they came with. This is the good news they came with. 
they just gave the good news to the people. They did not force the people to believe in them, to believe in Allah. They did not force the people. They did not have any force. They were not sent with the army behind. They were just the mourners. They just gave the good news. They just encouraged the people to do the good, de good deeds. They just encouraged the people, persuaded the people to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not force. They did not have any army. So that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ We not sent any messenger, messengers. إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ مُنْذِرِينَ فَمَنْ آمَنَ Yes, whoever believed and whoever did, do, did the good deeds. فَلَا خَوْفُنَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ For them, there is no huzn. There is no sadness. There is no regret. وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ وَلَا خَوْفٌ And there is no fear for them. We fear for something in future. What if this happened? What if that happened? What if I lose the job? What if my business goes down? What if I die? What if I suffer from some pandemic disease? What if my children uh, go sick? What if this and so all these are fears of future and regret, huzn. Huzn is about the past things, wrong things, which happened in the past, we, whenever we come to remember them, we become sad. This is Fuzan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we sent messengers, and whoever believed in them, and whoever changed himself, not just a belief, whoever changed himself, uh, Whoever reformed himself, whoever changed himself, whoever started doing good deeds after believing in the Prophet's message, then for them, there's no fear, there's no reason on the Day of Judgment. So messengers are sent, they are just uh, given a duty by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For them, it's only conveying the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's up to the people. It's up to the people. Whether they believe or they reject the message of the messenger. It's up to the person. Whoever wants to believe, he believes. Whoever, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at one place in the Quran, he said, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ if Allah willed, if your Lord willed, all the people, all the human beings would have been one ummah, all the Muslims. Similarly, at another place, Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا Had your Lord willed, this ayah is addressed to Prophet ﷺ, because Prophet ﷺ was eager that all the human beings should convert to Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Prophet sallam, that that's not how Allah created human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the right of choice to all the human beings. So it's up to, the, up to them whether they believe in Allah or they don't believe in Allah. And in this ayah, of Surah Yunus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Prophet sallam, had your Lord willed, if your Lord wanted, all the Muslims should have believed in him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's not how he created them. He created them with the right of choice. He created them, they can choose the right thing, they can choose the wrong thing. They can choose to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they can choose not to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting here. وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ We did not send messengers except they were mubashirin, except they were munzirin, they were the warners and they came with the good news. 
إلا مبشرين ومنذرين فمن آمن and whoever believed in Allah whoever believed in Allah سبحانه وتعالى and whoever reformed himself changed himself they are the one who are free from all kinds of خوف all kinds of fears all kinds of future fears and all kinds of uh, sadness in the past so this is the choice of human being if they choose to believe in in the messenger and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will have no fear and they will have no huzan and then in the next ayah ayah number 49 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا Those people who rejected the ayat of Allah, the miracles of Allah, the message the prophets are sent with, those people who refuse to believe in that message, وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا Those people who rejected, refused to believe in our ayat, our, our sign, وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَمَسُّهُمْ Them will touch. يَمَسُّهُمُ الْعَذَاب Azaab of Allah. The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will touch them, will catch them, will surround them. يَمَسُّهُمُ الْعَذَاب بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ For their wrongdoings. For what wrong they have been doing. Because of their wrongdoing in their life on the day of judgment, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will catch them, will touch them. The punishment of Allah is uh, the example, the example uh, which is like we can imagine that what can touch us? Some living creature can touch us. So it's like the punishment of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like saying here, the punishment of Allah, the hellfire is like a living creature. And it will approach the people. It will touch the people. It will find the people. And it's not going to be like a passive creature where, where people will be thrown into it. Hellfire will be looking for the sinful people. It's like a living creature. It's very threatening ayah in a sense that those who believe, do, those who do not believe in, in the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the punishment of Allah, the hell fire, the fire will look for them, will chase them on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the hell fire, halim talati. Are you full now? So many human beings are thrown into it. Allah will ask the hellfire, Are you full now? Do you need any more people? Do you have some more capacity? Halim talati. The hellfire will reply, will respond to Allah. Watapuru hal mazid. Do you have any more human beings? I have so much capacity. So the hellfire is like a living a uh, living creature, it will call out to Allah. I have plenty space in myself. Send more people. So this is very threatening situation and this is what prophets, they warn. This is the punishment prophets came to warn the people. Prophets came to warn the people about the punishment on the day of judgment. وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَمَسُّهُمُ الْعَذَى بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ So, the fear of Allah, the fear of future, فَلَا خَوْفُنَا عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Those who believe in the ayat of Allah, those who believe in the messenger, they will have no fear. And this means, on the day of judgment, in order to save ourselves from the fear, and from the huzan, from the sadness. It is best to fear, to be fearful in this life. Be fearful of the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. If we are fearful, if we fear Allah, then this will help, this fear will help us to stay away from the wrongdoing, to stay away from the sinful actions. 
because fear of Allah is very important. Actually, the fear of anything plays very important role in our life. Just like we are driving on the road, it's the fear of the law, it's the fear of the police person, it's the fear, it's the fear of uh, the surveillance camera, which keeps us drive carefully, because we know if we drive recklessly, if we drive in a speedy manner, we will be caught in the speeding camera and we will be fined. We will be fined. Uh, we will have to pay the damage for over speeding. We will be punished. There are so many different ways which, uh, by which we can be punished by over speeding. It is the fear of the police person and the surveillance cameras. That is why we do not enter in any no entry. We do not drive recklessly. Similarly, if we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will drive our life very carefully, very cautiously. We will stay away from the wrongdoings and the sinful actions. Because we know that if we do the wrong action, we will be punished. So fear of Allah is very important. It helps us to improve our characters. It helps us to stay away from the sins. So, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ وَمَنْ آمَنَ وَأَسْلَى فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَمَسُّهُمُ الْعَذَابُ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ So, fear of Allah in this dunya will help us to be saved from fear on the day of death. Those who are not fearful in this life, they will be under fear on the day of judgment because they will be facing the consequences of the sinful actions they have been doing in this life. They will be thrown into the hellfire. They will be, they will be punished. So in order to save ourselves from the fear from the azab of Allah, from huzan, any kind of huzan on the day of judgment, it's the best, but the best thing is we fear Allah in this life. We do tawbah. This sense of fear, this feeling of fear will lead us to, to improve our character, to do tawbah and istighfar, and to regret, because if we want to save ourselves from any regret on the day of judgment, regret in this life on our past because we should regret on on the past on, on our deeds in the past everybody should be regretful because somebody should do toba because some people can say that i didn't do anything wrong we didn't commit any sin why should we do toba and istighfar why should we regretful so Prophet said, all the children of Adam, all the, all the children of Adam, they are sinful. All the children of Adam, they are sinful. No, with, without an exception. Even the Adam himself, he happened to commit a mistake. So all the children of Adam, that's what our Prophet told in one of the Hadith, all are sinful. So all should seek tawbah. Even, even if, even Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one of the narration he said, I seek istighfar of Allah 70 times a day. In one of the narration he said, 100 times a day I do istighfar and tawbah. So istighfar and tawbah is very important. Never think that I never committed any wrong, so why should I do tawbah and istighfar? All the time do tawbah and istighfar. We consciously and unconsciously happen to commit so many mistakes in our life. So always seek tawbah, even the prophets, even the prophet sallam, and all the other prophets. In one of the ayah we learn that when prophet Ibrahim wasalam, he was building the Kaaba, such a great job, such a great, such a great good deed. And while he was building the Kaaba, he was seeking tawbah. Was he doing anything wrong? He was doing very um, um, righteous thing, building the house of Allah on the command of Allah. 
and he was building the kaaba and he was saying rabbana taqabbal minna wa tub alaina and we i i seek tauba ya rabbul alamin i seek tauba i seek istighfar ya rabbul alamin maybe i did something wrong in building the kaaba maybe i placed a brick of the kaaba where i was not supposed to place it maybe i so many mistakes happened maybe in my intention maybe something wrong in my intention we are human including the prophets they all seek tauba so we should regret we should be regretful and we should seek tauba and we should be fearful in this night and this fearful uh, attitude and this regretful attitude regretful attitude will lead us to improve our character will lead us to live a life which is uh, uh, which is away from sin which is away from sin so in order to save ourselves from the sins and from the wrong doing the best attitude is the attitude of tauba and istighfar the attitude of fear and the regret in this life and inshallah this will save us from the regret and the fear on the day of judgment in the ayah number 50 which is the last ayah we are going to share the tafsir of in today's dars allah subhanahu wa taala is saying to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam qul say to them la aqulu lakum i do not say to you indi that with me khazain allah the treasures of allah that i do not say to you i do not claim that i own i possess the khazain of allah the treasures of allah subhanahu wa taala what are the treasures of allah store houses of allah subhanahu wa taala riz is the treasure of allah this uh, silver and gold and the water is is the treasure of allah allah has stored it where allah subhanahu wa taala has stored the water in the form of ice so allah subhanahu wa taala owns the treasures lahu maqalid as samawati wal ard allah has the key allah has the key whatever is in this heavens and the earth lahu maqalid as samawati it's not the prophet who has the key so you know uh, the mushrikeen of makkah they used to assume that if he is a prophet he should own he should possess the treasures the the gold the i mean everything should be in his hand he should he should have plenty money while we seeing he is he is a poor man he is an orphan he is struggling with his life what kind of prophet he is so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i do not claim that uh, i own and i possess the treasure this is this is something which belongs to allah subhanahu wa taala qul la aqul lakum indi khazain allah i do not possess the khazain of allah these khazain belongs to allah subhanahu wa taala and secondly prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is asked to tell the people in this ayah wala a'lam al ghaib and i do not have the knowledge of unseen ghaib and because uh, mushrikeen of makkah they used to say what kind of prophet he is he should know every about every hidden things he should know what is uh, hidden under the earth and he should know what is not seeable what is not seen by ordinary human being prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i am like like you i am human being i am not the rab i am human being like you so i do not know about the unseen i do not have the knowledge of unseen qul la aqulu lakum indi khazain allah wa la alam al ghaib wa la aqulu lakum inni malak and the third thing in this ayah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is asked by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell the people wa la aqulu lakum inni malak i neither claim i neither say that i am an angel because many people kufar they used to say that what kind of prophet he is he eats like us he drinks water like us he walks like us he marries he becomes sad he becomes happy he what different how different he is from us he is like us so what's so special about him why should we believe that he is a prophet he is like us he is He is like human being. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "I am well. I am a human being. I don't claim that I am an angel. 
I don't claim that I have the knowledge of ANSI. You know, even today, the ordinary people, they have some assumptions about scholars, about big people, about righteous people, that they know everything. And they, they are like angels. They don't eat like us. So when they see some scholar, some righteous person, some imam doing shopping in the grocery shop, they say, what kind of scholar? He, he's doing shopping like, you, like us. Similarly, you know, one of the incident, professor, uh, one of the incident, one of the incident, man, some people came to Imam Malik, rahimahullah, and they asked some questions about the and uh, Imam Malik replied, La Adri, I don't know. They asked another question, another question. So many questions they asked. To every question, Imam Malik replied, La Adri, I don't know, I don't know. So sometimes the big scholar, they might say, what people will say about me? They will say, he doesn't have enough knowledge. What kind of scholar he is? But Imam Malik, was humble and he responded, if I don't know, I don't know. Similarly, Prophet ﷺ once asked a question by the Kuffar about the people of the cave, about the room. And Prophet ﷺ said, okay, I will answer your question tomorrow. Prophet ﷺ assumed that Allah will send some wahi and I would reply them tomorrow. But wahi didn't come. And Kuffar came again on the next day and they repeated their question. They wanted to know the answer to their question. Prophet ﷺ again said, I will tell you tomorrow. Prophet ﷺ assumed that, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Jibreel and uh, that's how Allah will tell me the answer and I will give them the answer. Eighteen, so many days passed. In one of the narrations, it is said, 18 days passed, but Allah did not send Jibreel. And every day, Prophet Sallallahu used to say, I will, I will tell you tomorrow, I will answer your question tomorrow. But no, he came. Then, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the ayah, this ayah is in Surah Kahab. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ Inni fa'ilun dhalika ghadan illa inshallah. Do not say that I will do this tomorrow until you say inshallah. If Allah wills. So this shows even Prophet himself, he doesn't know anything. He only knows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the knowledge of. He only knows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a wahi about. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam couldn't answer the question posed by Kuffar for many days because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala did not tell him. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala did not send wahi. So that's what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being told by Allah to tell the people that قُلْ لَا أَقُلْ لَكُمْ عِنْدِي خَدَائِنُ اللَّهِ I do not own, I do not possess the khazayan of Allah, the treasures of Allah. Wala alam al ghaib, and I do not have the knowledge of unseen. Wala akulu lakum inni malak, and I don't say that I am an angel. In attabiu illa ma yuha ilay. I rather follow whatever wahi is sent to me. Allah sent the wahi to me, and that's how I know. That's the knowledge I have. If Allah doesn't send the wahi to me, if Allah doesn't give knowledge to me, if Allah doesn't tell anything to me, I'm just a human like you. In at I follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also means that Prophet sallallahu is saying that I am also a follower like you. I follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I give to you, I convey to you whatever Allah sends to me. In and then in the final part of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, tell them, all, say to them, Hal can a person who is blind, 
and the one who is able to see, perceive, can these two people be the same? No. The one who can see, the one who reflects and understands, seeing here actually, not seeing by the eye, is seeing by the heart. The person who is blind, who is blind by heart, maybe he is able to see, his eyes are functional, but because he, he is not a believer, he doesn't believe, he cannot recognize the truth, truth of Iman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considering him as A'ma, the blind person. The one who recognizes the truth and believes in the truth, he is the one who is actually able to see. And the one who does not recognize the truth and is not able to, uh, does not believe in the ayat of Allah, in the eyes of Allah, he is a blind, he is a blind person. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring in this ayah. Hal yastabil a'ma wal basir Can a blind and the one who can see are the same? No, they are not same. They are different people. The one who can see, the one who can see, he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He reflects. Afala tatafakkar. Why don't you reflect? Why don't you think? So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in summary, in a couple of minutes, I will summarize all the three verses. In the first ayah, ayah number 48, Allah says, We sent messengers, and they were only warners, and they were only sent with good news, news of reward. And they were not like forceful people. They did not have any army and force behind them to forcefully, to forcefully make people to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Rahafiddin, there's no compulsion in Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever believed, فَمَنْ آمَنَ وَأَسْلَحَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ فَلَا مُنْ Whoever believed in the message by choice, for them, there's no khawf. فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ there's no regret and there, uh, there's no fear for them. And وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَمَسُّونَ الْعَذَابُ بِمَا كَانُ يَسُّونَ And those people who rejected the ayat of Allah, who refused to believe in the ayat of Allah, they will be punished. غَيْب And I do not have the knowledge of غَيْب, unseen. Allah has the knowledge of unseen. And I'm not the angel, I'm just a human being like you, and I eat like you, I walk like you, that's how I am. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't eat, and he, uh, he is not like human being, he is Allah samad, he, he is uh, he is unique, he's not like human being. And I am not an angel, but I pull like minni malak in attabiu illa ma you highlight. I just follow the wahi, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is blind and the one who can see, are they equal? Basically, no. Why don't you reflect on the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? أقول كل هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا الله